What people don't know is that 70 percent of the increase in inflation was a consequence of Putin's price hike because of the impact on oil prices. So the big story with inflation right now is that we have a lot of it. We just got numbers for inflation, which is a fancy way of saying price increases for the month of March, and they were up close to 9%, which is a very big number, the biggest since the early 1980s. And that's driven by really high oil prices, housing prices, food prices, everything is costing a lot more. But reasons for that, they have to do with the pandemic, they have to do with the war in Ukraine, they have to do with supply chain disruptions. There's a lot of things that are feeding into this inflationary spike. The other problem with inflation, uh, price increases like this, is once they get locked in and start really moving higher, it can be a self-fulfilling prophecy and becomes very hard for policymakers at the Federal Reserve. So we're at a tenuous time right now where maybe this is peak inflation. If you're president, you can try and influence Congress to reduce spending to, to fight inflation. But most of it happens at the central bank. And of course, the president of the United States gets to nominate the central bank chief, the president can pick somebody who he thinks will lean in his direction on interest rates. But there's always tension between the president and the Fed because their time horizons are different. White House thinks about midterms, re-election. Fed thinks about five years, six years, 10 years, where's the economy going to be? And the last big one was really the late 70s, early 1980s. And it was mainly the result of very long gas lines because of oil embargoes in the Middle East and our issues with Iran and lots of geopolitical problems. Jimmy Carter, who was president at the time, very quickly became a one-term president in 76, not exclusively because of inflation, but partly because of that. So you got Ronald Reagan and you got a new Fed chair at that point, a man called Paul Volcker. And he was tasked with bringing inflation down from somewhere in like in the 15% range, like levels that we can't even sort of conceive of today by doing a series of very heavy handed rate hikes to slow the economy down. And he did, but he did it at the cost of a, a long and painful recession. A lot of times when the Fed raises rates, it causes recession because they slow the economy. In the housing bubble, when it blew up, there was huge inflation in house prices. It was sort of limited to that area. But the Fed eventually had to raise interest rates to prick that bubble. And as we know, it all came kind of collapsing down and the financial system itself was, was tested. The big problem for most recent presidents has not been inflation, but deflation, where prices go down in a slow moving, slow growth economy, which is what we have had since the 2008, 2009 financial crisis. March of 2020, in those terrible early days, the comeback from COVID has led to our current bouts with inflation. They did very unique things in the opposite direction to fight a slow economy, high unemployment, impact of the virus, and you know lingering impact from the financial crisis. That's when these new tools to goose the economy came out. They started this thing. The Federal Reserve, the nation's central bank, is taking emergency measures to help businesses and Americans alike, cutting interest rates, buying up hundreds of billions of dollars of debt, and offering trillions in loans to banks. Quantitative easing, which is another way of impacting the economy from the central bank without needing Congress or the president. Quantitative easing just means the Federal Reserve using its ability to print money, essentially, and buy unlimited amounts of government and federal debt keep money flowing through the system and they did trillions of dollars worth of it that drives republicans crazy a lot of the time they don't want the fed to be able to be in control of the money supply and determine how much cash is in the system donald trump would rail endlessly against his pick jay powell for being too quick to raise interest rates and slow the economy he was very quick to reverse the rate increase policy when it looked like the economy couldn't handle it and he's been very slow to turn it around some would say way too slow in raising rates and getting rid of the extraordinary asset purchase programs and left us very much at risk of a sharp inflationary spike. So now part of what they're doing to fight inflation is unwind those programs. Uh, a lot of critics would say they're too late. Historically, we have seen tightening cycles characterized by soft landings. Soft landing is a interest rate hiking cycle to avoid inflation that doesn't cause recession. If you look at economic polling, people are pissed off. It's going to be a real trick for Democrats to figure out how to avoid big losses in the midterms based on this. The government intervention from COVID definitely played a role in, in goosing inflation a little bit. But the flip side, 
you could easily argue was you just simply couldn't let people fend for themselves in this type of a situation when all income is immediately lost. The current inflation does not bode well for the future. Is it peak inflation? There are a whole camp of economists, Wall Street, and obviously people in the White House who think, yeah, this is peak. 9% in March is as high as we're going to go because COVID's going away, because supply chain issues naturally will resolve themselves. And it could be right that, that that's where we are, that this is the peak and it'll go down from here. But there's no guarantees. We thought it would be transient. It hasn't been transient. 